Hello again, welcome back. So now let's fix up our magic teacher just a little bit. So just to just to clean up her her widget, make it look a little nicer, and add a little camera function to her. So I'm gonna go into my magic shop widget. And I don't know why I said widget like that, but I'm gonna go over to the child layout and for the slot padding I'm gonna set it to five. Then I'm gonna go into my shop widget because uh, I need to check Shop image order 5, 25, 110. I like the way that one turned out, so I'm going to use the same one. 5, minimum desired slot width, uh, 25, and the height, 110. So now what we need to do is in our shop, magic shop icon, we need to add one more text block. So I'll set it right here. It doesn't need to be that big. It can be just like 10 light center justification so that's right in the middle and I'm gonna shrink it down and then move it in place just like that because it's gonna go right underneath because that's gonna be the price so with it selected so right here you'll notice that uh, I can move it down and it doesn't affect the actual overall size of it it's because this is actually the top I've basically inverted that text box so this is the bottom this is the top now so you can just kinda move it into place I'm going to set its name to be price and set that it is a variable in the graph right here where we're constructing the thing I'm gonna drag out the price get it and I want to set the text of text just like we did last time and it's just gonna be the price of that spell so now if we were to try to add the icon to our character it ain't gonna do nothing just yet so I'm gonna add an on clicked event and on the clicked I am going to cast to my player for the object I'm going to get my player character and then I'm gonna grab out my spells known array because the first thing that I want to do before I start adding to that array is I want to check to see if they already know this spell because if they do there's no point in them spending the money to learn it again Ugh. learn it again excuse me sorry so I am going to drag off the array and see if it contains an item now the item I want to see if it contains is our spell info of this slot so I'm gonna add a branch and if it does contain it, I'm just going to print a string that says, you already know that one, homie. And if it doesn't, then I can drag this down. And then I'm going to add a unique instance. to that array if they don't already know it. So we're checking to see does their spells known already contain this one? If it does, you already know that one homie, you don't need this. You don't need to waste your money, I'm looking out for you. But if they don't, then we can be like, all right, we'll give you that spell, let's take your money. So now if I go in, run up to my shopkeeper. Now you can see I've got my price underneath I can click fireball it doesn't cost anything just yet but if I click it again you already know that one homie we're good and then you can see in my spell book there it is so now let's set up the actual price of it so if it's false we're adding the unique copy of this spell to our book we want to break open that spell info I'm gonna over here off where we're casting to the player I'm going to promote it to a variable called player ref just so that we don't have to be dragging wires all the way over I hate I mean I like spaghetti but not in my blueprints so 
So now I am going to, oh, actually, you know what we should do? Before we add the unique, we should check to make sure that the player has enough gold for it. So we're going to add another branch real quick. We'll grab out that player reference, and we will get our gold and see if it's greater than or equal to the price. And then if it is, then we'll add the unique. But if it's not, we'll just print a string. That says, you broke, broic, broke, you broke. Alright, so if we've added the unique copy, as in we did have enough gold to actually buy it, then we're going to drag out one more copy of this player reference. We're going to get our gold one more time, and we're going to set our gold. So from the get gold, we are going to subtract. Drag out my spell info one more time. Break it open. And I'm going to subtract the price from the gold we have and then set our variable to the new amount. So there's that right there. So now that's all looking pretty good. Let's take a look. I do not have much money. I cannot afford many spells, but I can afford... Hey, I can afford my heal spell. Why did I set these prices so high, man? I'm robbing myself. So, alright. So I can buy the heal spell, and it costs a lot. And then if I try to buy the fireball, you're broke. The shopkeeper is insulting me. Everything is as it should be. And I can equip my spell. Yeah, everything's looking pretty good. Alright, so now inside the magic teacher, there's another couple things we need to do. So when we create the shop widget, one thing we can do, like we did last time, is we can add a camera. Right now I'm going to set a default mesh, just so I can position this. Oh, uh, you might need to, in order to do this, just get rid of that for a second. I'm going to rotate my mesh that way, because that's the right way for some reason. And then I'm going to just position my camera where I need it. That's looking all right. So now I can hook this back up. And she's gone again. All right. So now in the event graph, after we add the widget to viewport, we want to set view target. That is not correct. We want to get player controller. Oh, that's not how you spell that. Get player controller. And we want to set view target with blend. This will let us blend from our camera to our new view target, which will be a reference to self so that it's blending to this camera, or this actor's camera. The blend time, I'm going to set it to one second for now. So now, after we do that, right off our player controller, we are going to set show mouse cursor. Hook that up right there. Then we will set our input mode to game and UI. Now the widget that we want to focus on is going to be our widget variable that we set up. And so now what we want to do is, well, what we can do is we can just copy almost all of this. Like we don't need, we don't need that part technically. All right, so I'm going to control C and move this up to where we're removing the widget from our screen. Plug that in right there. Now we don't want our new view target to be the camera or the camera inside this blueprint. We want it to be our player pawn. So I'm going to get the player pawn. And this will blend back to our player blueprint. Now I want to set the show mouse cursor to false so that it hides it. And then I want to set my input mode back to game only. Oh. Then hook that up, otherwise it ain't going to do crap. 
So now when I run up to So now when I run up to her <laughs> Camera moves in and all that's looking pretty good. I can buy my spell. I can't buy other stuff when I'm broke. And I already know that one. I don't need to buy that one anyway. So I've got that one. But just like we did in the shopkeeper, right at the very end, we cast to the player and then set that the actor was hidden. We can do the same thing here. So the magic teacher. Right at the very end, I'm going to grab out my player rip. Oh, we must not have set one up here. All right, so I'm just going to cast to the player for the object. I will be getting my player character. And I'm going to set actor hidden in game. Set that they are hidden. I'm going to copy this, control C. Move it up here to where we're reverting back to play state. Hook it up. And set that we're no longer hidden. So now when I run in. That's weird looking, isn't it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that. So it's moving a little too slow for my tastes. So set view target, let's see, I'm going to set it to like 0.25. What was it in the shopkeeper? What was that? Oh, it is point, okay, 0.25. So I remember it was decent in the other one. Yeah, that looks right. Looks pretty good. So I can buy, you broke, can't afford it. But I can't afford that one. But I already know it, so I can't buy it again. And now I'm too broke to afford that one. But let me sell some stuff. Maybe I'll be able to afford it. Just to see how the shop system's working. So, doom, doom, doom. All right, I got $800. Now I should be able to buy another spell. What spell do I know? Heal. All right, so I can buy Fireball. And now I've got two spells. Hooray. Can I afford a weapon real quick just to see, to make sure that it's all, yeah. All right, so. Yeah, and I can cast my new spell. I can do everything I need to do. All right, so that's all looking pretty good. So in the next one, we'll start getting started on a save system so that you can actually run up to a point and save your data when you're ready to. We're gonna do, I'm gonna show y'all two different versions. Um, one will be an auto save system and then one will be the manual save system. The manual save system is gonna be the one I'm using during the rest of our tutorial series, but that way y'all can see what goes into into both of them so all right i will see y'all in the next one my friends bye bye